10 years ago, this is not possible. No, and it, it's accelerating and not decelerating yet. But I, I'm beginning to sense that there's a pushback. Oh, yeah. Because I, I think you, I, I think they've made a serious miscalculation. They pushed so hard and so long that they started to wake up middle America to the point that they're saying, wait a minute, what? That, yeah. That's not okay. When they start rewriting history, when they start rewriting science, when they start trying to get the government to co-parent with you, with your child, people start saying, okay, whoa, 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 whoa wait a minute. I didn't mind when you were running around here talking crazy, but now you're starting to get into my business. Is like, like my grandmother used to say, now you, you've gone from preaching to meddling now. Well, you know what's, what's That's happening not okay. in Canada, right? I mean, what? Canada has some pretty insane cases that are going on right now about uh, gender transition from really young kids. And there's all this pushback with uh, parents, and there's all this because the parents are not being told that their children want to transition. So there's this guy that was talking about these issues of parents' rights in Canada, and he specifically said that parents don't have rights in Canada, that they have, I feel like he said they have obligations, is that the term he used? But he said under Canadian law, parents don't have rights. Like, what the fuck are you saying? Let me make sure that's exactly what he said before I get sued. But when I saw it, I was like, this is such a crazy thing to say. And if that's the way their law is structured, fix that. Like, wh who are other people to tell you how to parent your child? And who are these people? Have they been vetted? Are they really good at parenting? Do you, they're supposed to be teachers. They're well, not supposed to be parents. Here's my problem with that. Um, if, it, it, and it, look, if, if you look at this right now, and I understand, I, I, I don't know if you know, but I've, I, I'm starting my, a whole new network called Merritt Street Media. No, I didn't know. Yeah, and we launch um, at the 1st of April. We were going to launch at the end of February, but we've delayed it a month in order to pick up s some massive, more massive distribution. And I, I have committed myself to owning the debate lane in America. I'm willing to let all sides come and say what they want to say, but they got to be willing to answer hard questions. And I've had some of these folks, I've already shot about 30 shows on Dr. Phil Primetime, and we're going to have four hours of news and a whole lot of other programming, but it's all about, I mean, let's be commonsensical, let's look at the facts, let's look at science, Let's not look at what you want to be the truth. Let's look at what is the facts. Let's look at what is science. Um, and we've got these people that it's interesting they choose words like uh, gender affirming care. You know, that's, that's interesting that they call it that. But really what they're talking about is hormonal therapy or sex reassignment surgery on children. And in fairness, the American Medical Association, the American Academy of Pediatrics, the American Endocrine Society, or whatever the exact name of that is, all of the major medical associations have signed off on this, Joe. They've signed off on it. And I have never seen those organizations sign off on anything with less information as to whether or not it does long-term harm of anything in my life. And when I when I ask about that, when I bring that up, then they immediately label you as transphobic. And I, I thought that the deal was first do no harm. And all of the European countries, you know, Sweden, Norway, they, they've all stopped doing it because they say, we, we cannot say in good conscience that this does no harm. Because it does harm. If 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 you look at the long-term consequences, if someone changes their mind at 10, 11, 12, 13 years old, um, they can't decide which pajamas they want to wear at night. And their reason for doing it is it stops this drive for suicide, that there's a suicide epidemic. It doesn't fix that. It doesn't fix all the comorbid issues that come along with feeling like they're in the wrong body. 
um, but yet they're pushing this, and it's we're going to do some shows that are already taped that are revealing what the real results of this are, and I think people are going to be shocked that these medical organizations have signed off on this. I think they've just given in to the pressure. Yeah, it's, I just don't understand where the pressure is coming from. Another phrase they're using now is life-saving gender-affirming care. They like to p- smash them all together like that. Well, I, I don't think it's that... It's gaslighting. Uh, I just don't think that there's evidence to suggest that's true. Is this Here the guy is. you're talking yeah. about? He said there's no such thing as parental rights in Canada. Children have rights in Canada, and those kinds of policies restrict the rights children have. This is a wild thing, man. It's, well, it's, it's, I've never seen anything like it. But America's not far behind that because no. I've, I've talked to a lot of teachers, and they're telling me that they have a duty to the children that if the child is not ready to talk to their parents about this, that it's okay for them to keep a secret from the child. Now, let me tell you what my problems with this are and see what you think. Um, first off, if this is either a psychological phenomenon or a medical phenomenon, and the teachers are not trained in either psychology or medicine, they're not any more trained to deal with that than they are to take out the kid's spleen in the homeroom. So if that's true, if it's a psychological thing, if it's, if it's gender dysphoria, or it's a, it's a medical uh, issue, then you need someone trained in child psychology, psychiatry, or medicine. And the teacher's not trained in any of those three things. Like I say, they're not any more trained in that than they are to take out the child's spleen. So how are they qualified to deal with that? Secondly, it's teaching the child to keep a secret from their parents. It's teaching deception and interfering between the child's relationship with their parent. Now, their issue with their their justification for that is, well, if the child goes home and announces this, or if we tell it to the parent, then the child could get abused, the child could get judged, the child could get kicked to the curb. Uh, But they have to admit, statistically, that that is very rare. And if that's the case, that's what we have child Department of Child and Family Services for. That's what we have Child Protective Services for. If that's the case, then you call in for some intervention if the child is being abused at home for whatever reason. Uh, then y- you get intervention in that way. But you don't come between the child and their parent. The parent has the right to know what's going on. Without a doubt. And also, these people that are teaching these kids, do we even know them? You don't know them. I mean, how, how much do you know about them before they start teaching your kids? Well, that's it could the thing. be insane. It's not like the threshold for teachers is so high that only the elite of the elite cross it. You see a lot of these weird people teaching classes, and you don't necessarily want them giving advice to children about decisions for the rest of their life. And here's an important point that people need to really take into consideration. There's a reason why they have little kids become suicide bombers. Because you can talk kids into almost anything. You talk them into believing in Santa Claus. You talk kids into believing in all kinds of ridiculous shit because they're really young. You could easily convince them in one way or another that they're anything, that they're, they're, they're queer, that they're trans. You could 100% convince some kids of all kinds of things, especially by reinforcing it with love and support and happiness. You can convince people of a lot of things. That's what's uncomfortable for a lot of people. For a lot of gay people, they're uncomfortable with the idea that a lot of these kids are just going to grow up to become gay. My friend Tim Dillon's talked about that a bunch. He says it's homophobic. It's like like they're trying to say, no, you're a girl. And really, maybe you're just gay. Like, that's okay. It was always a thing. And now all of a sudden it's getting, you're, you're looking at little kids, it might just be gay kids. You're saying, maybe you're a girl. Maybe you need to go to a gender reassigning surgery center and never have an erection or an orgasm for the rest of your life. Like, what the fuck are we doing? Yeah, it, They're it, so I, young. It, it, it's not, I don't think it's appropriate or safe for children. And I think you have, there is 
a huge body of literature uh, that addresses these issues from end to end. There's not a huge body of literature about the transgender population, and that's the problem. And what literature is out there suggests that you get, and this is where this is what you see from uh, the European countries. They've done study after study from uh, these suppressive hormones compared to doing psychotherapy, and there's not much difference. If you do psychotherapy, you can ease the depression, you can ease the suicidal tendencies with psychotherapy without doing the irreversible things. They say, well, you can reverse those things. No, that's not true. If, if you arrest the development, that can have ramifications long term, or at least they can't say it doesn't have ramifications long term. There's also serious side effects from the hormone blockers. Well, of course. And, that's, and if you're doing testosterone blockers, for example, um, that does have long term consequences. And my point is, they can't say it doesn't. They don't have a body of literature that says it doesn't. And I'm look. What do you I'm think not is behind it, though? Like, what? How did this? If it, this is so contrary to the way most people feel, what do you think is behind it? Especially the push towards children, affirming children. Do you think it's because there's people that are queer or LBGT, whatever, and they want other people to be a part of their their group? Is it they want more LBGT people? They want to encourage this behavior? They think it's suppressed, and maybe there's more people that are gay or whatever, and they want to come out and they just get suppressed by it, so they're trying to make it like more enthusiastic? Like, how is, how is this trans thing becoming a major point of debate with children where it never has in history? In your life, in my life, there was never all this talk about trans children. Like, this it seems insane that we've forgotten that kids don't know what the fuck is going on yet. I think a lot of it is owing to social media platforms and the Internet. I, I think um, this is what I'm talking about when I say the activist, I don't think, speak for the community at large. I think they get an agenda that they're pushing— and I think they really get wrapped up in this, and it gets a lot of oxygen on the Internet. It gets a lot of oxygen on social media platform. Now, they say there's no social contagion here, but the girls that are claiming to be transgender, that percentage has gone up. Some reports say it's gone up um, – 800 percent, 1,000 percent over the last several years, and they say, well, that's because they feel more comfortable talking about it now. Is that true, or is it because you read about it, you see it on social media, and you think, well, I can distinguish myself in this way? I think there is a social contagion effect, so people jump on the bandwagon, and if it's for a short period of time, but they've done things that can't be reversed, I think that's really tragic. And they say there are very few detransitioners. I don't think that's true. I think there's a lot more detransitioners that want to reverse this and come back than are being reported. And But there's a lot of deep shame attached to that, obviously. Of course. It's also something that you don't want people to know about. It's it's so personal. It's so, it defines you for the rest of your life. Everyone's going to know that's the guy that used to be a girl and became a guy again. You know, and there's all the questions and all the bullshit that comes along with that. I will say this. I don't think teachers want to get involved in this. I think they're getting – I think some of them push it. I think teachers at large just want to teach. I don't think they want to get pulled into this. Well, it's like bad cops, right? Like yeah. you, th you hear about a bad teacher, and you think all teachers are like that. But They're that's not. ridiculous. Most of them are just people who their their profession, what they enjoy, is teaching people. They do, and let me tell you, teachers don't get into teaching for the money. I don't, I don't know a teacher that doesn't get into their own pocket to to get resources for the classroom, to help with the classroom, to put up 
signs and bring in materials for the classroom. Most of them are very dedicated. Uh, they're, they're, they're very good people that teach because they really want to help young people. I, I think they're some of the most underpaid, dedicated people in this entire country, and they don't want to deal with this stuff. Agreed. 